<clears throat> think about, if you will, for a moment, how you approached something is ecstatic in your adolescence and think about how Martin described the adolescent youth of his villages years of his village years ago as the shimmering and think about for just a moment how your adolescence would not be described as shimmering and then move on for a minute, if you would, <clears throat> thinking about how your mother, or the lack of your mother, detracted in some way, unintentionally as it may have been, unintentional as it may have been, how she detracted from that time in your life, <clears throat> and how that set you up in the different ways it did to relate to your father because she told you how to relate to men or how it set you up to relate not so well to the women that you've tried to relate to including your wives and your lovers if you're gay <clears throat> and I want you to think for just a moment about the way in which you not getting initiated and then this mothering and then this lack of shimmering keeps you in the 12 year old boy state in the many ways that we've seen this weekend that we've been in a 12 year old state Staying in a 12-year-old state or returning to that 12-year-old state is what is known as, in psychology, as regression. You're 58 years old one minute. You're talking to the person that you love about something that is <coughs> troublesome or frightening or fearful, and the next minute you're 20, and 10 minutes later you're 14, and an hour later, you need a babysitter for <laughs> because you're two now. But you're trying to process material and information that only an adult should be attempting to process. Mm. Only an adult should be dealing with this kind of material. <laughs> you're talking about you're having a child or getting a divorce or, or moving or changing jobs, but somehow or another, you made a movement and a turn in that conversation back towards your mother, back towards the breast, back towards the womb. Now, you've had these conversations, haven't you? Oh, yeah. John, would that be like, for me, I'll, I'll get in a situation and I feel like a two-year-old. Yeah. I didn't do anything. Yeah, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. When, when, uh, you walk in the door and and uh, your wife just turns and looks at you and you go, what? <laughs> what? Just tell me, I'll confess. You just tell me what you caught me at and I'll confess. What? I know I did something. Just here, here's a blanket apology. I'll write it out. You know, I hope it fits the situation. What? So... <clears throat> This is regression. Now, some of you at other my workshops and talks, you've heard me talk about this extensively, and we won't get into it today. But I'm telling you, when I was 16 years old, I went into this place with this woman just 100 miles from here. And in many ways, I've stayed in that place. And when I approach a woman today, what place? What place? I don't get specific. I, <laughs> I mean, what the hell is use a gossip if it isn't any specific? <laughs> <laughs> he drew a sword. What sword? Never mind. <laughs> He 
his regrets already. Can you feel it? <laughs> <laughs> Look at these eight-year-old spiders. Uh, <laughs> number one rule. Number one rule. Never tell anybody they're regressing. <laughs> You'll regret it every time you do. Honey, it would appear to me. Now, this is just my feelings, but I feel that you're regressing. <laughs> Sub subtle language there, just enough, just enough psychology to get you in trouble and get you into a divorce. You know, John, I had a thought, you know, maybe when the male regresses, the wife aggresses. Aggress very often. Yes. But she's doing it from a regressive place. You're right. You're right. No, that's right. But that's why that's she right. will aggress. That's right. Then. That's right. Because somebody's uh -huh. got to protect the den. So if you go back to being 12 oh, or 4, oh, that's good. then the woman or the lover will come forth in a very aggressive way to protect the den. Oh, wow. Because a bear in that hard wiring, as Robert Moore calls it, that bear could still come through the door. Mm -hmm. So somebody had better crank up because if you're going to act 4 and go to the womb, she's going to have to crank up. That's very good. So, this is just a little piece that I want to give you. At these men's conferences, when men leave, when men get here, they very often go into a regressive state, and they feel small. We don't even like these platforms because that accentuates that in many ways for some men. But it has to be, of course, and you just have to deal with it. But that perpetuates and accentuates that. And then when men get ready to leave, they go into another kind of regression. I don't want to leave. I want to stay here with the guys. It's going to rain later. And there's that's not be... regression. That's yeah. sensible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'll tell you when it's your turn to talk. I hear and I obey. Always the last And tell me what happened to Yvonne. You know, so, um, so this is just a little place that I want to give you before I... I close my portion out this morning is there will be a tendency to to regress and then when you get home there'll be a tendency to continue that though it it will appear like you're in a very adult place and you're telling everybody and you're telling your wife and you're telling your lover what happened and it, it, it can actually exacerbate the situation in a in a way that we don't want to do we'll tell you more about that when we close this afternoon so I want you just to think for a minute, 100 miles from here, I went to a place, and this place was where, in order to be with my mother, I had to split her off. I had to split her off. The only way I could relate to her was as a friend. I was one of those that my mother thought I was her best friend. And she was my father's lover. You follow that? And I know this ain't true for everybody, but she was my father's lover and I was her best friend. That psychological split and that regressive place has stayed with me for 40-something years. And it's caused much damage. So what I would do when I would get with a woman is I would either turn her into a friend or to a lover. You see how I split my mother? Mm -hmm. I would, uh, my mother was my father's lover and my friend. So I say this with a great deal of pain. And I've been there for decades mm -hmm. without knowing it. So people would ask me, for 10 years, 12 years of teaching, well, how do you do relationships? I've never, I've always been amazed that people would come to my workshops on relationships. I find that phenomenal. <laughs> I got four books over there that says, I don't know. <laughs> and 
and people feel more comfortable with you, John. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, so they'd come and they'd say, what do you do? And I'd say, well, you know, there's a funny phenomenon that happens when a man and woman, their lover, the lovers finally separate or divorce. One person will always say at the end, now let's be friends. Mm -hmm. Now let's try to be friends. We weren't friends when we were lovers. We weren't friends when we were married. We weren't friends when we were having children and going through bankruptcy. We weren't friends when I was screaming at you and calling you names and telling you I never wanted to see you again. But now that all that's done, let's try to be friends. Somebody will always say that, usually. And it's, I'd say, you know, that should come at the beginning. Not at the end, but I couldn't do it because I was doing the same thing. And every woman that I've ever loved and left, we are good friends. But we weren't friends at the beginning and the middle, only at the end. Now, that's a personal story of my regression and how I stayed in that small boy place, in that adolescent place with my mother for years and years and years and years. It's the pen that went into my collar, that put me sound asleep. And these beautiful women, as troubled as some of them were, would come and try to wake me. Wake up, John. I, I, I really am here to love you and to be your friend. And I'd go, the only way you can be with me is if you fit in one or the other category. And they go, please don't do that. Let me be both at the same time. And I go, I don't know how to do both at the same time. I can do it with men, but I can't do it with women. Because I couldn't do it with my mother. I know enough of what you've told me about your mother to know that your mother was aware that she was doing this also. Yeah, yeah. yeah and she that was. hurts. Oh. Yeah. And that's why I had, to take, I had to take a significant period of time off from my mother, which was two years. We saw each other for the first time about uh, two months ago, for two years. I've been working on this material for a long time, but I had to stop talking to her every day and seeing her every day. She called me every week of my adult life, and if she missed a week, she felt like there was something wrong. You know, So we had to take a significant period. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. I'm saying that's what I had to do. Can I tell that story about your mother calling you up and then... Uh and uh, something like that, or you called your mother, and she says, how are you doing, John? And John says something like, oh, I'm tired, you know. I've been uh, doing too many things. I've been doing too many lectures and so on. And then your mother says, John, God will never give you more than you can stand. Oh. <laughs> and all of a sudden he says, fuck you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, that's a real moment of bravery. I still <laughs> tell that. <story. laughs> and, uh, as if it happened to me. I mean, no, I don't. I tell it from time. But there's a wonderful little remark. And wham! It came out like that. And it just came out spontaneously. I hadn't planned it, but it was like a moment of, now stop. Fuck you. I, I stop hiding behind your religion. And you either come out to meet me as a man who is tired and depressed mm. and see me for what I am and who I am, which is tired and depressed, or you tell me you can't do it. But don't come through this persona or this mask of religion or this mother stuff that has done so much damage. So this was difficult. Now, I'm not saying that you should say this to your mother or any of that. I'm just saying that I want you to find the place that you're in this morning. Find out how you've made certain splits. Find out how you stay in a kind of regression. Find out how, what makes you, think about for a minute, what makes you go into that 12-year-old place. When you're with somebody that you love, and you're 52 years old, or 66 years old, or, or 28 years old. <coughs> what is that thing? What is that place? When, when we come back from this little exercise that I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you five ways to keep you from going to that place, or when you get there, to get out of it. Okay? Have I said this right? Set it up? <coughs> You want to give them the yep. thing right now? Yeah, yeah. So you help me. 
So what you do is that you turn and face an, another man. Like if John and I were doing it, we would turn, face this way. And then one way to do that is to, we're each going to spend five minutes talking to the other man. And uh, sometimes it's good to put your hand on the heart of the other man so you can really feel the chest. And if they don't want you to, you just yeah. put it on their hand or don't touch them. If you don't want to be touched, you know. If I were going to begin this with John, I would say, you know, John, um, you want to tell me when the first time you really became conscious of a real uh, going back and being regressive. The first time you or became would conscious. Would you like that or the last time? Or the last time or the time that you always do. The statements oh, yeah, that is good. made or the actions or the behaviors that make you zoom go back towards your history just like that. And you know it. You know which ones they are. You know which one takes you hurling back to your mother every time they do it. Tell that man either that time or what that that thing is that does that. And then uh, if uh, I ask John that, he gives me a couple, and I just ask a few questions to keep him going. I, I say, well, uh, did that happen, you know, with the, the, your last girlfriend um, or uh, whatever? I would just ask, I don't well, say anything. One before just, that or the one before that oh, or the one before that. <laughs> Just but ask whining is allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I say you did it, John. You regressed. This is a time to whine. This is the time to whine. <laughs> Don't whine later. Okay. So then, when that five minutes is over, we hit the drum, and then the other person uh, gives examples of that. So tell the truth now about what this is that sends you back to that place where you want to crawl back into that mother's arms or go back and and or or what it is your mother did that caused that to happen or your father is this clear this is, is just five minutes it? five minutes with each other because i realized a couple of days ago that with me it's often a general feeling that i'm inadequate mm -hmm. is in the house so i just realized that a couple of days ago that one way that gets me to go back. So let's do it right now. Okay, just sort of spread out as best you can. Find a partner. Back in. John, what is the term you use for? A woman. <laughs> That'll throw me back right back into my adolescence. Have a TMM, temporary moment of maturity. Had one last month. Almost, almost killed me. So we want to finish the story, and I just want to tell you one thing. That um, one reason I like to come to these things is that when I'm wandering around my home in a kind of trance. Occasionally, an intelligent thought will come through. Is that one? <laughs> and these little thoughts that come through, uh, it's important to say them in a few days or else they're gone. You know what I mean? Right. They sink yeah. back down again. Yeah. And so the other day, um, as I was telling my partner, I had this sensation. Because we're in this place of, one of the good things that's happened in the last 20 or 30 years is to try to decide when you're talking as an adult and when you're talking as an adolescent. You become sensitive to that, is that right? Thank you. The German father that screamed all the time, he was really an adolescent at that moment. Yeah, but but no right. one ever asked him to think of that possibility. Mm -hmm. I am someone in the house and I'll tell you exactly what to do in the house. And we said, whoa, he's a big adult. He wasn't. But my father was Irish and he did the same thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's right, Irish German. So, <laughs> so I'm just saying there's something here about trying to become, John is marvelous on this issue, of trying to become sensitive to when you regress and when you aren't. What are the kind of things you say when you regress? And you've got to forgive yourself all the time. And I'm going to give you five, five, the five things now very quickly. what I was worried about. I knew you'd do it. <laughs> Go on. Five things very quickly because it happens all the time. It, it's not to shame you about. It's actually a moment of grace actually a moment of grace we'll talk about that some other time it's a moment of grace for you to grow yourself back up and get closer to the people that you love it's just a moment of grace five things very quickly one attention attention 
if, some, if you'll get somebody to pay attention to you who's not involved in your aggression, you will grow back up much more quickly. Attention. In, in Death of a Salesman, Willie Loman's wife says, Attention! Attention must be paid to this man. Mm. Two, empathy. Empathy. Somebody, I call and I say, Let me tell you what's going on. And he says, I understand. And that grows you up. Three, touch. Mm. Touch. Mm. We're touch phobic in this country, mm -hmm. but if you can have a man or a woman who you're not so far in regression with, if it's your wife and you're not and she's not too far, you can just say, "Hold me, mm -hmm. touch me." One thing I learned from John was this thing: I'm in a thing with my wife, and uh, she is upset, and I'm upset, and then I just keep making it worse. And John says, "No, what you do at that point is you go up to her and you say, you look like someone who needs to be helped.'" Mm. And it takes some force of resistance to overcome that anger. Yeah. But you go up and put your arms around it and you say, you know, you look like someone who needs to be helped. And this is John Center, I realize that's because touch comes in right touch. here. Touch. Touch. And you can both grow up then. That's right. Robert, yeah. I went through several years being afraid my wife would say, don't touch me. That's right. That's right. But what they it never happened. Never happened. No. No. It won't happen practically. It's, it's number four, time. 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 Sometimes you just need to say to the person that you're in regression with, honey, lover, sweet one, I need an hour. I'll be back. Time. That's, Wallace, Wallace. It's, you have to be adult to ask yeah, for that. That's right. Now, these are, just, these are just ways to keep yourself from going. Sometimes you go so far in, you're gone, you can't do any of these. These are for when you catch yourself when you're still around 18. <laughs> These these are these are these are non applicable when you're two. <laughs> the time. Wallace Stevens says, sometimes the truth depends on a walk around the lake. Mm -hmm. That's nice. But it's important that you say that one hour. Yeah. Because yeah. That's right. If you just say I'm No, no, no. You say what what it is. I need ten minutes, I need an hour, I'll be back in two hours, I'll be back in twenty seven days, you can count on it. <laughs> <laughs> number five, number five is release, release. You go into your body and you see what needs to be released. Is it the anger, the grief, the tension, the tightness, the nervousness, the tightness in your jaw, the clenched throat, the knot in your stomach, and you release it with a friend, preferably by yourself if you have to. Those five things or any combination of those five things will grow you up much faster than if you don't do them. Can you talk to me about the first one again, attention? Attention to what? Attention is simply this. If you had have had the kind of attention that I'm paying you right now, tell me more. What's going on with you? What, what's happening with you and your wife? I'm listening. But see, we don't give attention. We go, well, yeah, yeah, well, that's true. You know, I, I know that's pretty tough on you, you know, but you know what you could do, what you could do is just say, fuck it. <laughs> and, and that's the kind of attention that we pay to each other instead of, I'm here, brother. Go ahead, talk. In that situation where I'm starting to regress, that I can ask for attention? You can, you can ask for attention from anybody, yeah. but you got to know that the person that's probably triggering the regression, whoever is, it is, is almost about to regress themselves. Oh, yeah. So they may not be the best one. Remember this, and then we'll stop here. We'll talk more about it at another time. Remember this. Regression loves company. <laughs> And you either, you either bring the person that you're with into your regression to have company, or you go find somebody who's not immediately involved, and then you take their company, and that'll grow you back up. Okay, so that's all the time we got for that. It's contagious. It is. That's it's good. contagious. That's good. That's right. Number two is uh, empathy, which is very different than sympathy. Sympathy says, I feel what you feel, and your feelings go into my body. Empathy says, I'm not taking your feelings into my body, but I certainly understand where the hell you're coming from because I've been there myself. I'm just going to tell this tiny detail that I felt the other day. Uh, you know, there's something ominous about women always telling each other that the men are boys. 
because that sets up a regression. Yeah, that's right. And then, if that's true, uh, then they have to become super adults. Mm -hmm. So my feeling the other day was this, that, that uh, to be able to say to a woman, now, uh, if you really want to set up a divorce situation, uh, the best thing to do is to leave the mood in the house that I am always inadequate. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just to say, if you want to really uh, set up something that will lead to divorce, the best way to do that is for you to leave a mood in the house that I am always inadequate. Yeah. And, you know, if we're talking about women being taught that men are boys, then they have to become adults. And what does a woman often associate an adult with? Critical. Yeah. You didn't do this right, you didn't do that right, you didn't do that right. She probably saw her mother doing that to her father. Right. Yeah. And that seemed like her to adult behavior. Actually, it forced, forced the father to regress. Right. Yeah. So, so um, I have to be fairly adult at the moment I say this. Is this right? Yeah. <laughs> and I you really have, have to be adult. And you have to say it at a moment when you're not yeah. in yep. this place, right. divisive, antagonistic place. You're laying in bed and you're talking over coffee and you say, you know, this is how I feel. Not when you're arguing and fighting, but when you're in this place. And I say, you know, there's a mood in the house, and this, you know, in, in the thought house, there's a mood in the house that, that, uh, that, that, I, that the man is not adequate. And what I want is a more loving situation. Huh? That's good. Oh, I hear you. So I'm just saying you've got to be really adult at that moment and there can't be any real criticism in you. You can't be in a trance because the trances will be uh, contagious. Mm -hmm. One of the Harlan Hendricks uh, forms of dialogue, if you don't expect a person to say anything that you don't want to hear, you don't expect something positive about what you just said. Right. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, if you expect something positive to that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, now here's your regress than you thought. Here's <laughs> give you one more little piece here. For every time you say the word you, you will regret it. <laughs> every time you say the word you. If you say it five times, you're going to miss up to four or five meals. <laughs> you say it 20 times, it could lead to a premature divorce. But it's like this. It's it'll go, you know, I walk in this house and I feel unloved. I walk in this house and I feel uncomfortable. And you know, it's perfectly honest to say, maybe it's my parents' house I'm walking That's into right. here. But if you don't say you, if you say you, then the parents' house That's is right. out. And there's got to be a and you, But you walk in and you say, you know, honey, you make me feel so uncomfortable but just by the things that you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> See? I mean, you just bam and it goes that fast. <laughs> So, um, now we got to get to the story, yeah, but before we do, I want to know, was this information and this stuff that I presented to you this morning useful to you? Yeah. 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 No more questions, ask me during the break and we'll take it. we got to get to the story because we've got dozens of things yet to do, so thank you. That's terrific stuff John is doing on regression, I think. Immensely helpful. <laughs>